how does compound interest differ? Well, like I said, it's still that same idea of interest. It's still paying you same interest amount, same, um, same principle. So in fact, I'm going to be really, really cheap. And this first part here, all the way from here to here, is exactly the same. Sorry, that was cheap and you can't do that. Okay, But I want you to see, right? Nothing has changed. If you have one year of simple interest and one year of compound interest, and it's compounding annually, nothing is different. They're still paying you 6%. It's still on 2400 At this point here, at the start of the second year, everything is still the same. If you've got a new color there, pick it up because now things change. This is where compound interest becomes compound interest. Okay. What they do is, remember how I said, they can consider each year as a new year, a new amount, right? So instead of working out 6% of this, they're going to work out 6% of the, the new amount, the 2,544. So let's have a new calculation here, right? This is going to be 2,544, and that's going to add on its 6% interest, which I actually have no idea what that is. What, what's that equal to? 6,4? Okay, so you can see here, because the bank account's bigger, they're going to pay you more interest. They pay you interest, in fact, on top of the interest. That's this compounding idea, right? From now on, everything is different. Compound and simple interest, they sort of diverge like this, okay? Because now, at the start of the third year, I'm adding on a different amount. There's that 2544, and I'm adding on this new larger interest, okay? Uh, yeah, we can we can do this in our heads. We can do this in our heads. Yeah. Two, come on, help me out. Six, nine, six, and eight. Sixty-four cents. Okay, so a bigger amount. This next bit's going to be a little awkward because we're going to have to do some rounding. But again, this time the interest is calculated on my new bigger amount, right? So this is going to be. I'm going to have to write a little bit smaller. It's going to be the new bigger amount, and I'm going to get 6% on that, 0 0.06. Okay, this time, because of the awkwardness of the numbers and the decimals were included, I'm definitely going to have to round here, okay? So you go reach your calculator, and it's going to give you more than two decimal places. So go ahead, can you calculate that? Work out what you get, and we'll go to the nearest cent. Someone got it? Yeah, 161. Okay, since it's 0.798, it's clearly going to round up to 80, right? Okay, so you can see now I'm almost home. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty much done all the tricky things. I've got all my three interest calculations that have all been done. Now I just need to combine it together, okay? So I've got my 2, 6, 9, 6, and 64 cents, plus my new rounded interest amount, $161 and 80 cents, and my calculator is going to tell me what? 2,000 what? <laughs> Thank you. There we go, let's put that in the middle. All right, happy times. Now the reason why I pointed out before in our simple interest problem, right, that there were two ways to do this is because before they were just as easy as each other. Like method one, method two, both the same, you could use either. But now that we get to this part, I think one of these methods is clearly better for this question now that I've done it by compound interest. Which do you think would be quicker? Yeah, right. Uh, the comparing the total balance to the... Yeah, total doing the difference is clearly going to be easier because I'm comparing two numbers rather than adding this one and then this one mm -hmm. and then this one. And of course, the more years, the more advantage I've got. Always be comparing the start and the end rather than adding up however many years of compound interest I've got. So my working is going to say 2858 and 44 cents. And this one you can do in your heads. What's the difference? 400 and, yep, and 44 cents. Done. Okay. So you can see the discrepancy there. Of course, compound interest has paid you more because they've paid you interest on the interest as well, rather than just on the initial number. Okay, so, <laughs> in the real world, right, on any bank account, they're always going to compound for you. Simple interest comes out in a vanishingly small number of cases. Um, however, it still does actually come up because it's simple to calculate. 
where does simple interest you use? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, so it depends on, for example, if God forbid any of you have to ever go to a loan shark to borrow some money, right? They're not going to go through and recalculate your interest every single time. They're just going to say, all right, this is how much you're borrowing from me. I'm just going to do a simple calculation. This is how much interest you're going to have to pay me at the end. Okay? Um, I hope you never ever go to a loan shark because they're not going to charge you 6% interest. They're going to charge you like 20. Okay? But because it's simple, they're not like a big bank with computers doing everything. It's just a guy in a checkbook or whatever or his own spreadsheet. They're going to do it a simple way rather than a...